the hard work you've already done. A warm welcome to the August gathering here. I am your host, L. Srimati, Executive Member Culturals from the Student Council. And I am your host, Jyotirai Nigadge, Member Secretary Culturals from Student Council. And we take immense pleasure and pride in welcoming you all to the University Day and Annual Sports Day 2024. Humble greetings to all the dignitaries, Honorable Chancellor, Dr. G. Vishwanathan Sir, Esteemed Vice Presidents, Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan Sir, Dr. G. V. Selvam Sir, Esteemed Assistant Vice President, Ms. Kadam Variyash Vishwanathan Ma'am, Respected Chief Guest, Prof. T. G. Sitaram, Chairman AICT, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Pata Sarthi Malik Sir, and Registrar, Dr. T. Jaya Bharti Ma'am. The annual University Day and Sports Day celebrates and rewards the achievements of students across academics, extracurriculars, and co-curriculars. It is a day to recognize and felicitate their stellar efforts. Today is a day filled with recognition and appreciation for the hard work, dedication, and talent displayed by our students throughout the year. Join us as we shine a spotlight on academic excellence, applauding those who have excelled in their studies and scholarly pursuits. With an all-round performance, our students have truly raised the bar in academic achievement. But the celebration doesn't stop there. We also honor the achievements of our students in extracurricular activities and sports. Their passion and commitment to these endeavors enrich not only their own lives, but also the university communi community as a whole. Without further ado, let us get started with the festivities. I request everyone to kindly rise for invocation. Nirarum kadaludutta nilamadende kirilurugum Sirarum vadana mina tigar barada kandamidir Tikkanamum madisiranda dravidana tiranadum Takasira pirainudalum taritanarum tilakamum e Atilaka vasane pola laitulagum imba mura Yetisayum pogarmanaka irinda perum tamiranange tamiranange Unsirila mai tiram viande sail marand Varta do me Varta do me Varta do me Thank you so much. Before we commence with the proceedings of the day, it gives me great pleasure to call upon respected registrar Dr. Chief T. Jaya Bharti, ma'am, for the welcome address. Esteemed Chancellor, distinguished chief guest, Professor Sita Ram, respected vice presidents, Mr. Sankar Viswanathan and Dr. G. V. Selvam, Assistant Vice President Kadambari S. Viswanathan, Pro Vice Chancellor Dr. Parthasharati Malik, dear colleagues, students, and others, good morning. It is my proud privilege to welcome you all on this important day in our university held to celebrate the achievements of our outstanding students in academics and sports. All of you students whom we recognize today with awards are achievers. Your achievement is definitely a proud moment and my congratulations on that. However, at VAT, we want all of you to think big. Having started early, this should be the beginning of a lifetime of achievement. For an example, worthy of emulation, you need to look no further than our chief guest of today, Professor Sita Ram. After an outstanding student life, he became a professor and researcher with numerous distinctions and then came back to academics as an administrator. 
he has now reached an administrative peak as the chairman of AICTE. Professor Sitaram has launched and implemented a number of fine initiatives, first as director of IIT Gahwati and now as chairman of AICTE. On behalf of VAT, my special welcome and thanks to Professor Sitaram for honoring us with his presence here. A healthy mind in a healthy body. Realizing that a healthy mind can reside only in a healthy body, we at VAT do not focus on just studies. We give a lot of importance to sports too. And that is why we have combined the sports day with the university day. Besides the achievers who are being honored today, I would like to inform our audience that we have quite a few medal winners at the national and international level too. Before I end, let me once again congratulate all the achievers who are being honored today. Keep it up. I also have a message for all students. Every one of us is gifted in a unique way. Discover that and pursue it with passion. This is the key to joy and success in life. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 2023 was a remarkable year for our institute in terms of academics, university ranking, and overall student performance. VIT has made big strides in the aforementioned areas in the past one year. I now invite our pro-vice chancellor, sir, Dr. Partha Sharati Malik, to deliver the annual university report. Our Honorable Chancellor and the founder of this institution, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, Honorable Chief Guest, Professor T.G. Sitaram, the Honorable Chairman of All India Council for Technical Education, our respected Vice Presidents, Assistant Vice President, Registrar, Director of Students Welfare, Director of Sports and Physical Education, all deans and directors, my fa dear faculty colleagues, dear students, press and media, very good afternoon. It is my great pleasure presenting this annual report of VIT on behalf of all VITians. It is my great pleasure to say that we started in 1984 with just 180 students, three programs, and 15 faculty members. And today, in Valor itself, we have 40,000 plus students, 77 programs, 1,956 faculty members. Of course, in all campuses, we have 88,000 students. I would like to share with our honorable chief guests some of our uh, rankings and accreditation. In QS, as per the QS, we are number 163rd best institution in Asia. And in engineering and technology in the world, we are now 240th. Of course, globally, we are within the top 900 as per the QS ranking. And recently, QS released the sustainability ranking where we are within the top 500. We are doing good in other international rankings also. And in national ranking, our NIRF ranking, we are the eighth best in the country in university category. In accreditation, the NAC, 
as per the neck we are a plus plus 3.66 out of 4 and in the fourth cycle last 15 uh, more than 15 years we have been uh, maintaining the quality in our teaching learning research and innovation of course our other programs of management are internationally accredited our chemistry program is internationally accredited and recently our bsc program accredited by icar indian council of agricultural research for 5 years and you will be happy to know that eight of our labs and facilities are accredited by nabl with this i would like to share with our uh, on our chief guest that in all this engineering category university category and overall category if you see that 2019 to 2023 the way we improved in rankings i would like to share the strength student and the faculty strength of vit valor we have more than 36000 students in ug and pg 4000 about 4000 research scholars we have in the campus and 554 foreign students in fact from 68 countries and 7, 771 nri students we have as i said we have 1956 faculty members and 863 staff members i would like to share with you that we have students from all states of india and all union territories of india in addition 68 different countries of the world we have 15 schools under 15 schools we have 77 programs and 11 research centers working in frontier research areas i'd like to mention here we have a very strong uh, research background and as i have already mentioned we are number 11th in the country total publications 47000 plus as per scopus uh, data and citation we have 5 lakh 6000 plus as per scopus again at present our h index is 190 the h index year on year the way it is improving you can see from here and also the scopus index publications it is my great pleasure to say that since 2017 we are on the top in the country as per the scopus indexed publications it is because of the hard work of the people of bit and the collaborators i'd like to mention here some of the unique programs seven unique programs here other than the last two faculty research award and seed grant the first five schemes are unique in the sense as per my knowledge no other institution either government or private they have this kind of unique scheme to promote research to motivate faculty members and research scholars so there are uh, many uh, these five unique schemes in addition many other uh, initiatives we have to promote research and that is why BIT is leading from the front in the country in research also. I'd like to mention that in this financial year till date, 31 crore we have uh, sanctioned from national and international funding agencies. In addition, consultancy another 2.64 crore. And VIT seed grant from our VIT own fund in this financial year, 4.68 crore we have already uh, given to faculty members for their initial research. It is true that 31 crore sanctioned, but the way we want to build this institution as one of the top institutions in the world, this 31 crore is not enough. In that respect, I would like to mention to our honorable chief guest that we really need financial support from government of India to build a world-class institution for the, for the country. I'd like to mention here the patents. Recently, we entered in the top 100 club. In fact, till date, we have 110 patents granted. Our, we focus more on success rate, just not on filing the patents. You can see in 2023-24, 62 patents granted in just one year. So 
this is again because of you in addition design registration granted 54 in this one year itself so total is 67 in design registration and the team of the people of tbi and the innovation the directorate of innovation ipr cell iic entrepreneurship cell they are working and uh, taking the lead and guiding the people for all these innovations, patent, and some of the patents uh, will be commercialized soon. I'd like to mention that our TBI, Technology Business Incubator, in this financial itself, year itself, they have got the 700 lakh, seven crores uh, from Government of India, and one crore revenue generation only in this financial year. This is for uh, the information. And 572 books and book chapters in 2023 itself, our faculty members, they published. In this regard, I would like to mention that we are very watchful towards the quality uh, publish, uh, publish, publishers and quality of the book. So uh, this is, again, a significant achievement by the faculty members, research scholars, and the students. I'd like to mention here we have a very good uh, resourceful, very rich library where we have 2,47,000 printed books. And e-books, even more than that, 3,64,000 uh, books. Number of titles, 87,000. And e-journals, we have 16,112. In this financial itself, we have spent 18.6 crore till date for the library. This is another... Uh, our resource we would like to share with you. We are also very happy. All of you know that BIT students get jobs, sometimes more than one job. And this year, for 2024 batch, already 690 companies they visited. So this is, again, a significant move from our uh, career development center office. And students are being offered super dream of our dream of our and so on. I'd like to mention that we have a very strong international relation office and massive internalization, uh, internationalization in the campus is uh, going on and we are very much focused towards that. You can see there, I already mentioned that 554 foreign students, 771 NRI students. In this campus, sir, Students are uh, talking in about 50 languages. We have 466 MOUs from 79 countries. In fact, in this year itself, we signed MOU with 57 universities from 24 countries. So this is again shows the way we are uh, collaborating with international experts in different subject areas. Industry, industry and industry experts are the integral part of our growth in our academics, research, and innovation. In this year itself, we signed 61 MOUs. You will be very happy to know that in this Valor campus itself, we have 11 industry-sponsored lab, where experts from industry, they come and work with BIT scholars, BIT professors, towards the solution of industry problems and consultancy projects. So this 11 industry-sponsored lab research centers are playing a very important role to solve the industry problems. In addition, we organize many industry academia conclave. We do have many academic program with industries. So this is again says the way we collaborate with industries. I would like to mention here a very unique scheme of VIT, a social scheme, in fact, support the advancement of rural students, STARS program. In Tamil Nadu, we have uh, 38 districts. The toppers, one boy and one girl, they get full free ship. They don't need to spend even a one rupees for, to uh, get the degree. And till date, 945 st student beneficiaries are there. I'd like to add here that female students 480, whereas male is 465. 
and the first generation graduates also you can see female number of female students are more this is creating a kind of revolution in educating the meritorious uh, students of uh, rural students you can see here all since we started in 2008 first best graduated in 2012 and almost 100% placement you see all are above 90% so this again i very i am very proud to say that this has created a revolution uh, inside the the rural uh, areas and the rural students some of the companies you can see here where they are getting job we have a lot of uh, csrd activities uh, time will not permit me to mention all i just uh, may, I would like to mention here that till date we spent 5.73 crores for uh, the rural development programs and some of the uh, program and the area i just mentioned here for your information social responsibilities we do organize all international uh, yoga day swachh bharat the government of india initiatives and activities we are very active part uh, as an institution i would like to mention here that our 38th annual convocation was held on 18th august and our honorable minister general dr b k singh Uh, he came here as the chief guest and on the same year 8897 students graduated i like to mention here that vit has a strong alumni chapter and 128301 alumni members are there registered members and we have 59 chapters out of that 38 international chapters and 21 domestic chapters and the chapters are very active and they are playing a very important role for the development of this institution you can see the list of the chapters here i would like to mention here that uh, there are many iict schemes uh, i'd like to appreciate the present uh, director and the team for uh, initiating many new schemes for the betterment of the teaching community student community ultimately for the overall development of a uh, teaching learning process of the country and we are actively participating in those uh, schemes i just mentioned some of the sample schemes here and at the same time we are participating very actively with other activities of uh, uh, government of india and for the people of the country as for example this vikshit bharat so uh, with this uh, some of the statistics credentials i like to stop here thank you very much thank you all thank you sir thank you so much sir considering the fact that our university gives equal importance to the holistic development of student community now to deliver the student activity report i would like to call the assistant director of students welfare dr n sharmila ma'am thank you jyotir on behalf of our director i am presenting the student activity report for the year we had our student council inauguration wherein we have inducted 48 students as student council members and we had a technical festival called yantra which is for internal students that is for the vitns we celebrated the world environment day kokoro the mental health awareness session kalakam was a, a stage play event to showcase the velur sepoy mutiny of 1806 
and which was done by the Dramatics Club. We had display of various vehicles by SAE teams, wherein we had uh, uh, delegates from British Petroleum. We also had a music event by the Butter Biscuit Music Band. We had star student induction. And during the independence celebration, we had a week-long celebration with various events, rhythms of freedom, the music, dance, street play, and talks. We had various events for the Independence Day. Then we had heritage visits around the Velour. There was a briefing session on various clubs and chapters. What are these clubs and chapters do? on uh, during the fall semester, that is um, the last semester. And we had live telecast of Cricket World Cup. And this semester we had NRA Day. NSS special camp in the nearby village. Election awareness campaign where there was a role play to describe what happens during the process of election and voting. And Funk Fusion, it was again a talent event. And Freshers Induction happened in last semester, and followed by a Freshers cul Cultural Fest, where the students were invited to showcase their talents. And Primavera is an exclusive cultural competition conducted for the Freshers. And these, are, these were the events that was conducted by the Student Welfare Office. And now I'm going to present about the events that were conducted in association with various clubs and chapters. We have 19 clubs and 58 chapters with us. We conducted awareness programs like blood donation camp, drive against the drug, mental awareness sessions, and yoga, international yoga day, friendship day, international women's day. So we also celebrate the various international days, farewell and chancellor's dinner, independence day and republic day, other state and regional festivals like Pongal, Ugadi, uh, Gudi Padwa, etc. And welcoming the New Year, we always celebrate the New Year Eve, Stars Day. And now let us also look at the various achievements that were brought about by students. Our students do not only perform well inside VIT, and also we, are, we motivate them to uh, participate in other activities outside the campus. So student achievements in hackathons, the other technical events outside. And these are the achievements by the technical teams, the cultural teams, dance club, music club, dramatics club, Mansok achievements. Our students have achieved various prizes. The first prize, cash prizes of worth about 10 lakhs rupees. And NCC, this time we have bagged the outstanding performance uh, for the activity and also for the officer and the best cadet award. And we have various achievements by other, other clubs like literary associations, debate society, and education clubs. So these are some of the achievements. And we have more achievements. And a glimpse of it has been showcased here. Thank you for your patience listening. Thank you, ma'am. Sports are vital life skill building activities. Excelling in a sport requires a synchronized harmony between the mind and the body. In a span of one year, athletes from VIT have brought home laurels by excelling in various regional, national, and international sports events. I now invite Dr. N.V. Tyagachandan, sir, Director of Physical Education, to deliver the annual sports report. Honorable Chancellor, most respected chief guests, respected vice presidents, respected assistant vice president, respected pro vice chancellor, respected registrar, dean's director, faculty and staff members, my dear student friends, very good evening to one and all. I am happy to present the annual sports report for the year 2023-24. Our students have brought more laurels to VAT by winning various medals, 
in various level tournament. Mr. Jayamardi, he represented Tamil Nadu in the Federation Cup Equipped Powerlifting Weighting, Weightlifting Championship 2023 at Madhya Pradesh. He won gold medal in the competition. I am very happy to inform you that he has been got selected to represent India in the forthcoming Asian Championship. <laughs> Mr. Dandraj represented VAT in the All India Inter University Wushu Championship held at Jammu. He won gold medal in that event. Ms. Varshini, she represents Tamil Nadu in the National Roller Skating Championship held at Tumkur. In that competition, she won one gold and one silver medal. For that, she got iCash incentive award from the Honorable Sports Minister, worth of rupees 5 lakhs. And then our chess team participated in the South Zone Inter University Chess Tournament held at Bharat Dasan University, Trichrapalli. Our team got the third position in the tournament and qualified for the All India Inter University Tournament. Mr. Aryan Shah won the best board prize award in that competition. Mr. Angit Kumar represented uh, his state in Junior National Classic Powerlifting Championship held at Ranji. He won bronze medal in the T event. Mr. Dhanasegaran represented Tamil Nadu in the 11th National Chess Boxing Championship held at West Bengal. He won gold medal in the T event. Ms. P. Nitika, she represented Tamil Nadu in the Interstate Archery Tournament held at Chennai. She won two gold medals in under-19 category and as well as in the senior category. <laughs> Ms. Tarushya, she participated in the Open National Indoor Archery Championship held at E-Road. She won silver medal in that competition. And also she represented uh, in the state tournament. She won gold medal in that event. Our students participated in the Pegasus a national level uh, intercollege tournament. Our students won in athletics, chess, futsal, hockey, throw ball uh, in that event. Mr. Aravindan, a research scholar, created a new record by walking a minimum of 21 kilometers per day and he covered 2,583 kilometers in 123 days. His achievements in, registered in Al Kalam's world records. Mr. Angit Kumar, participated in the state junior powerlifting championship held at Satishkar. He won silver medal in that competition. Our throwball team, women team, participated in the North Zone state throwball championship held at Chennai and then they got runners-up position in the tournament. Mr. Rohit he got selected to represent Tamil Nadu in the 14th South Zone shooting championship held at Thiruvannandapuram. Ms. Ruthika, she won bronze medal in the state level chess tournament. Mr. Dhanasegaran won gold medal in the Tamil Nadu State Chess Boxing Championship held at Salem. Mr. Madhav Kishnan participated in the district level marathon championship and he won gold medal in that marathon event. Mr. Prem Sai participated in the district level powerlifting championship held at Visaga Patnam and he won gold medal in the D bench. And, uh, Ms. R. Lakshmi Priya participated in the district level boxing championship held at Vellore. She won gold medal in the event. Nitika, again, she participated in the inter district archery championship held at Chennai. She won two gold medal. One is under 19 and uh, one is in senior category tournament. Mr. Mogamath and Mr. Vijwal participated in the 75th Republic Day boxing tournament. Both of them won gold medal in the different weight categories. Again, Mr. Madhavan and Mr. Baskar participated in the district level marathon competition. They, Mr. Madhavan won gold medal and Mr. Baskar won silver medal in the competition. Mr. Vijwal participated in the West Zone Boxing Tournament. He won gold medal in that event. Baskar participated in the district level marathon competition held at Vellore. He won silver medal in the event. Our team participated in the Vibrance tournament organized by VAT Chennai. Our tennis team got run winner's position and football men runners, hockey men bronze medal and uh, best physique miss won bronze medal in the event. Our women swimming team won various medals in the swimming competition. Events organized by the Department of Physical Education to encourage the students in the physical activities. We have organized more events uh, in the different occasions like Olympic Day, World Chess Day, Independence Day, National Sports Day, Fit India Week, we conducted a walking rally and then Pongal Sports Fest, 75th Republic Day 
and then we, first time we have organized a proctor procti sports event to build a strong relationship between proctor and procti this time we have organized proctor and procti sports event these are the pictures of the events and then every year we used to organize the Madhi Rajeshwari Amal Memorial Inter-School Tournament. This year, 15th year, we have organized the inter-school competition. Around 500 students were participated in the tournament. First, we have organized the freshest tournament in various sports and games for men and women separately. Every year we used to organize one inter-university tournament. This year we have organized a South Zone Inter-University Badminton Tournament for men. Around 94 universities from southern part of India were participated in that event. And then VAT Premier League. To encourage the students in the activity, we have organized the Premier League. Here students can register their own team irrespective of school. There is no re restriction for entry. This time around 10,022 students were participated in the VAT Premier League. This is the picture of VAT Premier League. Rivera International Sports Event. We started with the marathon. Our respected Vice President inaugurated the marathon event. And then we won in most of the games and we won overall trophy in the event. Health and awareness program, we used to organize uh, yoga. Periodically, we organized uh, yoga for students. On, uh, on the occasion of World Bicycle Day, we have organized uh, bicycle cycle rally, Zumba event, walking rally. And these are the tournaments we have participated in the inter-university level, South Zone and uh, All India, various around 15 sports we have participated this year. This is the medal tally. This time we have won nine gold medal in the international and six silver medal and six bronze medal. National level 14 gold and 12 silver and 12 bronze. State level five gold, three silver and two bronze. District level seven gold medal and two silver medal. Every year we used to give scholarship for the outstanding sports person. This year 142 students are going to receive a sports scholarship for their achievements. We feel concerned about our faculty also. We organize various events. And then Mr. Uh, Dr. Praveen T. He participated in a state level intercollege at faculty and staff tournament organized by Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education. He won bronze medal in the event. Mr. Veera Raghavan participated in a Tamil Nadu Masters state ranking tournament. He won two medals in the D event and also he got selected to represent Tamil Nadu in the 30th National Masters Table Tennis Tournament. These are the events we have organized for the faculty, Olympic Day, International Day of Yoga, Walking Rally, Chess Day Competition, Independence Day, National Sports Day, Festivity Fun Events, Teachers Day Sports, Mini Marathon, Zumba Program, Fit India Week, Walking Rally, Yoga, Founders Day Celebration Sports, and then Rajeshwari Vishwanathan Memorial Tournament, 75th Republic Day Sports Event, VAT Premier League for faculty and staff members. And also we have organized various health awareness programs for faculty and staff like Zumba, Yoga, Walking Rally. And other events held in VAT like other schools tournament, Card Party Zone Tournament, SGFI Soft Tennis Tournament, District Level School Tournament. SGFA selection, CBC clusters games, state level chess tournament for school boys and girls, 41st sub junior state volleyball championship for boys and girls, around 588 students were participated in the event, national level soft tennis tournament for boys and girls, around 460 participants were participated in the event. Astudu Akkada, a martial arts event was organized. Around 325 participants were participated. Free summer coaching camp for boys and girls. Kartpadi and Vellur District Zone tournament for school students. Seventh Euro Men's Asian Hockey Champion Trophy display event was held in our VAT campus and Honorable Chancellor and respected Vice Presidents were participated in the event. Faculty and staff children sports event. 
I would like to thank our Honorable Chancellor, respected Vice Presidents, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar for their, their valuable guidance. And also, I would like to thank uh, the other uh, section heads for their constant support. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much, sir. Finally, the time has come for honoring academic achievers from various schools. Starting off with School of Advanced Sciences, I request respected Registrar Ma'am, Dr. T. Jaya Bharti, to please felicitate the achievers. Starting with MSc program, we have Nedunuri Srai Shri Vidya. Next, we have Nambiar Aparna. Up next, Sayan Ghosh. Up next, Anaga Bijli Gopakumar. Next up, Mahavidya Satish Kumar Indra. Next up, Aishwarya Murli. Balaji R. From MSc Fire Integrated Course, Aisha TA. Akash Philip. Lavanya M. Rita Raina Mathiv. Surya G. S. Yashuvantra Devi, Sahana K, Afreen S, Avasthi O. T, S. M. Vineet, Tejas Jain, Ruhi Rohit Adke, Alfred Jacob Mohan, Samir Anand, Khashia Khalid, Abhishek R, Next up, School of Mechanical Engineering. From BTEC, we have Ramcharan K. Ryan Jomi Valvi. Deshpande Neel Anand. Gautam Gupta. Abhranil Mitra. Parchuru Saket. Manav Siv Utkrist Nanda Harshwardhan Rajan Parab Pruthav Dinesh Walapurappu Deva Gracian Boaz Shinde Rohan Migda Venkata Lola Dattu Abhishek Tvarma Akash Shrikhande, Arvind Raj, Shomashri Goswami, Siddhant Kumar, Dodi Ram Surya, Anantha Krishnan K. Verma, 
Next up from School of Electronics Engineering, B.Tech, we have Priyomeda Ghosh. Saloni Rati. Anishka Bala Subramanyam. Karapusami S. Ananya. V. Varun. Neha Susan Anil. Adar Sumu. Sanjay C. Ronak Sava. Janani Shri S. Keetham Reddy Yashita. Sarvanavikas Dhandapani. Sanjay Devvel. Bipin Chandra SM. From M.Tech program, we have Arsha Lomba. Devika Rajiv, Sharon R, Harini V, Sri Rama Pagari Nilkesh Anurag, Jaya Subishka V, Kagitha Thanyaman Lakshmi. Vatikola M. Vivi Bala Vamsi Deep Mala Thank you, ma'am. I now request our Pro Vice Chancellor, sir, to award the academic achievers from the following schools School of Biosciences and Technology, Shrijana K., Polam Raju Sai Manognya. Polam Raju Sai Manognya. Kanungo Srishti Manoj. Athira P.A. Meghna P. S. Santoshi Ayer. Raj Lakshmi Panda, Anisha Judith J, Shaina Srivastava, Kunal Santosh Patil, Sanhita Patak, Sharanya Pal. Pannaga Ravindra Hegde, Nandana Jayachandran, Femida Sharaf, Sai Gayatri Rajiv, Madhubala G, Priyanka M. We move on to scope. Aditya Ambadas, Sarvesh Narendra Landge, Elina Parajli, Teresa Jacob, Shreya Gupta. Rinu Biju, Shruti Goel, Navadesh M, Meenakshi RS, 
समृद्धि शर्मा जयश्री वर्धिनी बी अरविंद एस दिव्या ई e, रजत श्रीवास्तवा हरिणी के नायर देविका जयकुमार बिजी विजय वरदराजन कनक शाह एम वी एस प्रज्ञा बाला उज्ज्वल असती कुमार प्रिंस अर्पित तिवारी पूर्वा नंदनवर केतम रेड्डी विष्णुवर्धन समिया मेहता स्तुति आर्य अदिति शर्मा पार्वती अण्णामले दक्ष गोयल आलोक सिंह सौहृद्य साहा श्वेता जोशी आर हेमेश एस श्रुतन पुष्कल गुप्ता वेंकट लक्ष्मी नारायण श्रेया गुप्ता पेरची अपन अन्नामले अंधवरपु मनोज साय अथर्व गुलकोतवर सागर एस वर्धमान जैन उज्ज्वल हिरवनी थैंक यू सो मच सर आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड असिस्टेंट वाइस प्रेसिडेंट मिस कादंबरी एस विश्वनाथन टू ऑनर स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग स्टार्टिंग विथ विकल्प गौतम गौतम शिव सुब्रमण्यम अमय रेजी कुमार लोकेश रस्तोगी फ्रॉम एमटेक हंचे अर्पिता दीपक ममता महाले नेत्रा शेखर कैलाश के फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ डिजाइन बी एस सी वी हैव फारिस सिराज जेसिका प्रिंसी आय केजिया जॉर्ज प्रिया पार्थ सारथी अवध सोहम चैटर्जी देबांश मिश्रा किशन आर फिदेली सविनी दोमिया अप नेक्स्ट फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ होटल मैनेजमेंट एंड टूरिज्म बी एस सी बालाभद्री वेंकटेश दिव्याश्री For School of Hotel Management and Tourism, I request respected Vice President Dr. G. V. Selvam Sir to please honor the students. Bala Badri Venkatesh Divyashri. चमन तहसीन के एन खुशी वी
फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ वायल दर्शन ए आर माहिल एन बी दर्शन ए आर फ्रॉम वी आई टी बिजनेस स्कूल अरिगेला वेंकटा अंजली दिशा रुंगटा एम संध्या इंदुमती के श्वेता एम नित्यश्री मीनाक्षी एस फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर बी आर रजत अनिल मेनन जॉयलीन स्नेहा स्नेहा श्री एस हरिप्रिया शिवानी मुखर्जी स्नेहा देवा रजू अप नेक्स्ट फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग मनाली महिंद्रा बर्वे सहाना जी श्रीराव तुषण प्रशांत लक्ष्मी रामन फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियरिंग एंड इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम यस सर हाँ स्कूल ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस वी हैव प्रतीक अग्रवाल शिवम काठोर अद्वित्या ओझा संजीव कुमार रामसामी सचिन रघुवंशी आदित्य मोदी चित्रांश सक्सेना राजित अग्रवाल वैभव जांगीड शुभम झा शिवम वर्मा सबरीना मानिक चाम वी उमेश कुमार राजू ई गायत्री वेमुरी जसवंत पवन सृष्टि गुप्ता थैंक यू सर आई नाउ इन्वाइट आर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट मिस्टर शंकर विश्वनाथन सर टू ऑनर स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग स्कूल्स स्कूल ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस एंड लैंग्वेजेस श्रीनिवास आर शक्ति प्रिया पी सुप्रजा आर तेजस्विनी आर पूजा रघुपति राम सुब्रमण्यम पी लिंसी फ्लोरेंशिया जे Arun Kumar M Moving on to the School of Electrical Engineering T Mohammad Ahti Sham Kuldeep Bag Siddharth Das कृष्ण प्रशांत पॉल पांडियन पवित्रा तंगराज गौरी चंदक 
श्रेया नायर दिवांशी राउत आकाशदीप संदीप देव मनोरंजित एस सी शांतिनी सारा बी जॉर्ज मौली अखिला टी आर थैंक यू सर notable academic accomplishments a strong emphasis on research and industrial collaborations have elevated vit to a top ranking institution in the world in addition to offering top notch education it prepares students to face real life problems being a pioneer in innovation science and technology i would now like to invite esteemed chancellor sir to deliver the presidential address and share vit's inspiring journey to the top of the audience our respected chief guest of today professor t g sitaram chairman all india council for technical education vice president assistant vice president provide chancellor registrar directors deans professors award winners members of the press and media distinguished invitees very good evening to you i am so happy today that uh, dr sitaram has accepted the invitation to be here in fact his uh, arrival is pending for a long time i thank him for accepting us today he presides over thousands of institutions in the country you know vit now it is 40 years old as a institution and um, from the inception we want this to be a model to the rest of the institutions not that we alone want to excel i want others also to compete with us so that the society will be benefited today we are distributing scholarship to all the meritorious students also to economically backward students as it was pointed out here by provid chancellor we have 40000 students in this campus of course nearly 4000 are research students the rest of them are undergraduate and postgraduate students out of them today we are distributing scholarship to 2451 students to the tune of 1 crore and 8 lakhs this is uh, not covering the star scheme you would have known that uh, we have a scheme called star support the advancement of rural students where we select one boy and one girl from each district who have studied in a government school located in a rural area is only to encourage the rural students particularly government school students this year we have 285 students now studying in vit and for them we spend 6.5 crores this year alone one year alone 
not only in Tamil Nadu, now we have extended this star scheme to Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. They are also getting the benefit. In the, in fact, I am always worried that the union government and the state governments do not spend enough money on scholarships. But anyway, they are giving something. Out of this uh, 40,000 students, 623 students are getting scholarship, both from union government as well as state government. Apart from the stars, we want to be a VIT, wants to be a model, and we are supporting a scheme called Universal Higher Education Trust Scheme, UHET, which is first of its kind in the country. Out of nearly 800 districts in the country, this is the only Vellu district. We have started this trust. I happen to be the president of the trust, but others are all public. We persuade students not to stop with class 10 or 12 and ask them to study whatever they want or whatever they get to go for a degree or a diploma. Now it is 10 years old. So far, we have given scholarship to 8,400 students and two-thirds of the beneficiaries are girls. Out of this funding, more than 50% comes from VIT. I would like to thank all our teachers and non-teaching staff. Every year they contribute one day's salary for this trust. And this year they contributed 85 lakhs, rupees 85 lakhs. I would like to thank them, all of them, because it's a model to other districts and other states also. VIT is number one, as it was pointed out here in the publications, Scopus Invest publications for the last five, six years. We are number one, including IITs and IASC. As a country, we are lagging behind in patents. I don't know how many of you go through that. We are very much behind many countries, but VIT wants to march forward in patents, and in the last 10 years, we have filed 224 patents, out of which 110 were granted. I would like to congratulate all the professors and research students for achieving this. And as it was pointed out, we are a leading institution in its placements. Last year, we had 947 companies came here for placement and 88% of them were placed. This year it's going on. So far, 700 companies have come, and uh, nearly 80% of them have been already placed. I congratulate the Career Development Center and all those who got placed. Today we are going to honor 380 students for 100% attendance. I, I am so happy because I studied in Loyola College for four years. I did two years BA and two years MA in those days. In all the four years, I had 100% attendance. I am happy that uh, 380 students are going to get this. It's an honor. And, uh, and also, I find seven professors and non-teaching also are getting it. Out of them, out of these seven, two are Professor Srinivasan and uh, Sudhakar, the rest are uh, non-teaching staff. I congratulate all of them because this will go a long way in setting an example to others. See, our country, as I told you, our budget this year is 47 lakh crores. Out of this, only about one lakh crore is allotted to education. About 50, 60 years ago, there was a recommendation by Dr. Radha Krishnan Commission that 6% of the GDP should be spent on education. Now in 2020, the new education policy also recommends the same thing. 
6% of the GDP should be spent on education after 60 years. So it means that has not been fulfilled for 50 or 60 years. And that is why in expenditure on education, there is a world ranking. And uh, India's rank is 155 out of 198 countries. Our ranking is 155 out of 198. We are almost near Pakistan. Pakistan is 154, we are 155. I think this should change because we want to become an advanced nation, a developed country. That will be possible only with education. Without education, we can never become an advanced country. I think uh, we are trying to impress upon the government through various associations and meetings that both the union government as well as state government should spend more either on the institutions or on the students. Take for example, the government institution, many of them, the government universities, they don't admit more students. In fact, uh, I was verifying with a university which is 22 years old, a government university. I asked them, how many students do you have? They say 680 students. After 22 years, the government university is admitting only 680 students and 80 are research students, 60 are regular students. And we, in this institution, we pay 30 to 35,000 stipend for PhD students. And the government university says they pay only about 8 to 10,000 rupees. Because the government is not allocating enough money on education. In fact, uh, Dr. Sitaram is here. He is with all the authorities. Uh, I don't know whether he will be able to influence. Of course, not only he, the entire education ministry should be able to influence others so that they allot enough money for research students and of course for government it's all infrastructure also. And um, the government intention is to increase our gross enrollment ratio from 27% to 50%. It won't be possible unless we increase the amount spent on education and our GER has to go up. All the developed countries, the gross enrollment ratio or GER varies from 60% to 100%. In fact, there are two countries, South Korea and Australia, they claim 100%. All other countries are above 60, 70, 80, etc. US is 88%. So in order to economically develop our country, higher education is necessary. And also to reduce the inequality. No doubt we are growing. As a country, we are growing because we are the fifth largest economy of the world. But in per capita income, our ranking is 140. And there is so much inequality in the society, in the country. To reduce the inequality also, higher education is necessary. And also we are a democratic nation. And to improve our democracy, the quality of democracy, higher education is necessary. So I request all the governments, both the union government as well as state governments, to see that enough money is spent on education. The other way is to reduce the cost of education. For example, a lot of levies, taxes are levied on education institutions. For example, central government levies GST on buildings, 18% GST on buildings. Either it can be removed or reduced to the minimum. Same thing happens in the state government. You have to get so many permissions. The permission is not easy. It takes months and months, sometimes years also. You know how delay breeds corruption. These are the things I wanted to mention today because the person we have today as chief guest is knows the problems of the universities, of the states, as well as the center. And uh, with his support, I thought we will be able to influence the government to spend more on education institutions and students because the last uh, committee which was appointed by government recommended that 10 lakh 
scholarship should be given every year by union government that was the recommendation in the previous commission but somehow it is not there in the present commission report i hope government will accept that and do this and i congratulate all those who are getting their awards today got their awards today and uh, i would like to um, uh, acknowledge the importance given to sports and games i saw jag chandan's report i was so happy that they are able to get at the international level national level state level and district level uh, i was a sportsman junior sportsman in my school days i was so happy that uh, our students are able to achieve everywhere whether it is academics or non academics we must be able to achieve and uh, always say that vit should be a model and i thank all of you for your contribution both the students as well as teachers thank you very much thank you so much sir your insights and knowledge always leave us spellbound and motivated moving ahead i would now like to call upon khushi parashar member secretary technical to introduce our chief guest of this momentous occasion it's with great honor and privilege that i stand before you today to introduce our distinguished chief guest professor Dr T G Sitaram a luminary in the field of civil engineering and academia Professor Sitaram's illustrious career spans decades of exemplary contributions to both national and international arenas beginning his academic journey with a BE in civil engineering from the University of Mysore Professor Sitaram went on to earn his master's degree from the prestigious indian institute of science bangalore followed by a phd from the university of waterloo ontario canada his academic pursuits led him to various esteemed institutions worldwide including the university of texas at austin usa where he served as a research scientist returning to his roots his tenure as a director of the indian institute of technology guwahati saw remarkable advancements including the establishment of new schools and academic centers propelling iit guwahati to the forefront of educational excellence professor sitarams has been instrumental in pioneering ground breaking research in geotechnical and infrastructure engineering seismic microzonation and soil dynamics with over 500 technical papers and 20 books to his name his prolific research has gained international recognition evident from his inclusion in the world's top 2% of scientists by stanford university as a fellow of prestigious institutions such as the Indian National Academy of Engineering the American Society of Civil Engineering and the Institution of Civil Engineering United Kingdom his leadership roles in organizations like the All India Council of Technical Education and the Science and Engineering Research Board underscore his commitment to shaping the future of education and research in india beyond his professional achievements professor sitaram's dedication to societal development is commendable his involvement in projects such as the ram temple foundation laying work and consultancy for critical infrastructure endeavors reflects his holistic approach to engineering and nation building professor sitaram has been honored with prestigious awards including the sir c v raman state award and the sir m visveswaraya senior scientist state award ladies and gentlemen please welcome our esteemed chief guest professor t g sitaram
नमस्ते वनकम नमस्कार ऑनरेबल फाउंडर एंड चांसलर ऑफ वेलोर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी वी आई टी यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे डॉक्टर जी विश्वनाथन जी द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट शंकर विश्वनाथन जी एंड डॉक्टर जी वी सेलवम द वाइस चांसलर टुडे आई थिंक इन आर अब्जेंस डॉक्टर वी एस कंचना भास्कर प्रो वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर पार्थ सारथी मलिक रजिस्ट्रार टी जय भारती एंड दि फाउंडर और सॉरी मिस कदम्बरी विश्वनाथन असिस्टेंट वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड ऑल द डिस्टिंग्विस्ट फैकल्टी द डीन्स and all the students of vellur institute or vellur university i'm very happy to be here today as part of the university day and sports day at vellur campus vit you have heard from the presentations both by the registrar as well as the the pro vice chancellor has achieved a grand stature for being a leading educational powerhouse in the last 40 years i think this is the 40th year because they started in 84 i was just mentioning to dr g vishwanathan that today parents and students are also accreditors other than nba and nac you know the students and parents are also going to select which university to attend what to do what courses to do so i think that's where we are a vellore institute of technology or vellore you know vit university as it's called today is known for its academic excellence and you have heard the exemplary performance in research innovation and holistic development which is actually truly commendable and serves as an inspiration to educational institutions not only in india even worldwide today friends i am going to give you some rosy picture about india's development okay i know the problems what uh, dr vishwanath highlighted i am not saying that they are not there but with all that you know india as a country as he rightly said is the fifth largest economy in the world and is going to become the third largest economy but there is a long way to, for us to cross the in numbers to the number 1 and let me first of all congratulate all the students who have received the scholarship and uh, i think it's a noble thought of the uh, institution leadership and i'm very happy that institution is uh, giving away large large number of scholarships to the needy students and also i witnessed large number of students are excelled in the sports and other extracurricular activities which is also need of the hour and this is a very uh, important day for the particularly students who have done in the extracurricular activities and also who have received the fellowships or scholarships so congratulations to all of them and and to all and also to all their parents and particularly you know in an university like this large number of faculty members who are present here today and i think we need to remember their contribution i extend my deepest appreciation for faculty members dedication passion and unwavering commitment to shaping the minds of tomorrow's leaders so in all in total i would like to extend my warm congratulations to the university for achieving all those accolades what they have mentioned in nirf and qs ranking d ranking and sustainability ranking and all that the global standards are known to you now and we are our universities are meeting them and uh, i also thank the all the parents you know today as i told you they are one of the accreditors or who have put their kids into these institutions entrusted their children to the care of this institution uh, and then i really appreciate their unwavering commitment support and and all that what is needed 
friends the university day is a day where you remember what are your achievements we have heard that and at the same time the sports day to see how our students are doing other than the academics in the extracurricular activities it's a very happy day to see such a wide variety of accomplishments by our students in a sort of a rural part of india so congratulations to all of them friends we are in amrit kal this is a golden time for india so just to tell you our research publications i wanted to just highlight on research publication we are today third largest publication producing country in the world in terms of patents in 20, in 2010 2010 we hardly had 100 patents today more than 80000 patents have been filed and we are the third largest patent filing company in the world but there is a gap from between the second and the first there is a large huge gap as dr vishnuatham said we need to do more and more so in terms of startups for example trying to look at it because we today uh, friends innovation and startups will rule the future of our nation startups in 2016 we had 300 startups 2016 not long back ago 8 years back okay today we have 125000 startups in the country this is a great achievement friends let me tell you give a big clap to the nation out of this 125000 startups 125 companies have become unicorns and these unicorns have produced 500 billion dollars worth market capital and one fourth of this come flowed from outside india to india is it not a great success <clears throat> friends even in technology adoption the kind of public digital infrastructure what india has created mind boggling let me give you some statistics about that so that you are appreciative what is going on in the nation so we have created starting with aadhar one of the largest public digital infrastructure then immediately covid came in covid vaccination numbers is mind boggling even assuming that two and a half vaccines per person 130 crores you can see 350 crore worth of vaccination done and is all digitally recorded recorded for every one of you many of you might have downloaded your vaccination reports have you not such a public digital infrastructure nowhere in the world has been created this this technology what we have created has been exported to several countries and beyond all that you know being being a largest economy in the world and we are the excellent researcher but i will tell you we are the most humane society forever you know as a country as a nation we believed in and we have done that during the covid when difficult period 100 countries we have received our vaccinations as a gift including countries like pakistan so this is this is a human universal human values concept what our indians have within their blood as well as the policies so these are the great achievements ladies and gentlemen and these achievements you can see what is happening is is going to be transformation is going to happen 17th century belonged to the dutch when they started sailing all over the world and created their samraj of dutch and then 18th century britishers established their samraj everywhere and ruled us more than 150 years after the world war 2 1945 Americans came into prominence friends this is the golden time for india after covid 19 it is india's time india is going to be the number one country soon watch my word is not is not going to be let down because we have the 500 million young people who are sitting here at the back side okay who are aspiring to become the world class engineers so how many engineers we are producing today ladies and gentlemen so we have 23 iits and we all talk about iits i was the director of an iit indian institute of technologies are the today the brand for the whole world you are hearing that but how many they graduate 15000 undergraduates that is four year degree program they graduate 
only 15,000, including all 23 IITs. Another 20,000 students come from National Institute of Technology, which is 31 of them. How many engineering colleges we have today? We have close to 3,600 engineering colleges producing 1.25 million engineers, friends. So if at all India has to become a Vishwa Guru, this is the area in the STEM area, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Our kids are smartest and brightest. I have taught all over the world, including Japan, China, America, Canada, Europe. I, let me tell you, our students are the brightest and smartest and nothing, nobody can beat them in science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Tell me, show me one company which doesn't have an Indian engineer graduated from AICTE approved institutions. Show me one company. It's very rare because across the world our students are there. Across the world. You have seen who really put the rover on the moon. Is the engineers, are they IIT people? I, I talked to Dr. Somanath. He said none of them are graduates of IIT and NIT in ISRO. All of them are AICT approved institutions, private institutions. Maybe Vellur has contributed also to that. Majority of them, even girl students. See, friends, note this AICT approved institutions has close to about 44% enrollment of girls, women. 44% of the girls. So, it's a it's a time where, you know, we have seen a transformative change in the technical education in the nation. In the last seven years, we had done phenomenal to include equity, accessibility, national education policy is one of the landmark document, ladies and gentlemen. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Some people say I have already implemented. That, that's their assessment or evaluation of their depth of understanding of uh, national education policy. National education policy document if itself, if you read properly, it has given enough time for you to do. It is not just the multiple entry exit. There are many elements. Research innovation, startups ecosystem, entrepreneurial culture, okay, sports, every activity has to be, and also making learning as an enjoyable thing. See, that's what national education policy emphasizes, self-learning. Okay, you have to learn on yourself reading from the material. Skilling is also another very important aspect. So many positive things. So let me come to scholarship. AICTE disperses more than 300 crore. Not 1 crore, 3 crore. 300 crore scholarships. Let me give you all scholarships of postgraduate scholarship, PG scholarships are given by AICTE to all the AICTE approved institutions. That is 12,500 rupees per month for all their two years for MTech programs. All postgraduate scholarships are given. For girls, we have Pragati scholarship, 50,000 rupees per year till they complete their degree. It's all government of India's scholarship scheme. Saksham. And then we, I can go on, you know, large number. Please look at the VICT website and these are all distributed, direct benefit transfer. Okay. Even till last year, we were giving GPAT scholarship for uh, the uh, pharmacy students but now pharmacy and architecture is out of AICT's domain we are not doing that but this year I myself announced 5000 scholarship for girls studying in BBA, BCA and BMS programs in the country for our new institutions which are going to be part of the educational institutions friends grass enrollment ratio I completely agree with uh, Professor Vish uh, Dr. Vishnathan that grass enrollment ratio is very low, 28.3. But in the last four years, it has jumped up almost by 1.2 percent. We are some, somewhere in 23, 27.3 last four years back. We are now 28.3 percent. That is the grass enrollment ratio today in the nation. Many countries, as he rightly said, is 80 percent and above. So, how many kids who are dropping out, not going to higher education? Can you, you have an imagination? Just get the numbers. 15 crore plus students are going to 10 plus 2 classes. Up to class 10, there are more than 15 crore students. Hardly 4.32 crores 
goes to higher education this is not a good sign so we we need more universities more colleges more programs to attract a large number of young people who are aspiring to become you know educated and education is the critical for a nation there are two concept of education one is research and innovation the other one is the skilling see everybody cannot be an iit just give you an idea see even these indian institute of technologies today are known to be the brand of india they are called institutes of indian technologies they are really producing large number of products but were they are they like that forever no when first iit was started 1951 and other four iits by 1961 totally five iits were there until 1961 and nothing started after that till 1994 the sixth iit was at guwahati where i was the director that was started in 1994 then 2000 iit roorkee friends note this in 2003 there was a survey done by very research scholars I, it has appeared in current science how many research publication our institutes of higher learning produces in that survey very categorically came out all eight iit seven iits put together in 2003 were much less than one indian institute of science bangalore which is my alma mater as well as my uh, employer okay indian institute of science was much much higher than as a one institute than all seven iits put together this was the story of 2003 in 20 years these iits have transformed to become the world class universities iit madras alone crosses the numbers of indian institute of science today ladies and gentlemen iit madras alone has more number of publication more number of patents than indian institute of science so in 20 years these institutions of higher learning have transformed themselves into a, a universities multidisciplinary research and innovation universities of our nation appearing in the top rank world rankings but i'll tell you you have to take ranking with a pinch of salt these rankings are all subjective many things are there see if if you look at the real numbers of the citation per faculty i think our institutions are doing reasonably well i'm not saying they are excellent but they are reasonably doing well but other perception studies will always a matter because india was actually put down we till very recently we couldn't even raise our head and walk across the borders this is the scenario ladies and gentlemen this is the golden time the things are changing in india for the good and our young people have lot of confidence and courage and ask questions and that is very evident so vikasit bharat developed india by 2047 is no more a dream ladies and gentlemen it's really is going to happen watch my word as i told you we are the force to reckon with because large number of young people with lot of ideas are with a fire in the belly are waiting to do something appearing to do something and you can see that happening all the multinational companies top notch companies in the world who is heading an indian diaspora where did you graduate from if you look at majority of them graduated from india and indian engineering colleges and then went on to get a masters and a phd from american universities so we are in the making of stanford and harvards in india watch my word in 10 years many of the private universities are going to rise much more much much above than many of our government institutions it's not very is very you know you have to wait and watch the why, how the development is happening i'm traveling across the, india there are a lot of investment happening from the private institutions on education investment on education has to happen more and more i agree there is no second question about it 6% of gdp is a lot lot of money but it is also linked let me also to assure you in the last few years there is a lot of investment when compared to our in not when compared to gdp but in terms of total number of investment which has happened for anrf that is the anusandhan national research foundation with 50000 crores every year 10000 crores is a, in addition to what scrb used to get 12000 crores so there is a lot of 
you know equity possibilities that means any many private institution also can participate in this competitions today many private universities can get projects from dbt dst many of those projects which was not possible just about 10 years back so there are a lot of positive things so let's look at the positive vibrations as a nation and move friends this is the day you know we need to look at how we are going to progress uh, in this very complex world of with a lot of disruption happening in the technology let me give you some picture for the young people you know this disruption because of artificial intelligence is mind boggling ai is not a future technology ladies and gentlemen it is pervasive and it you are actually carrying every day with you artificial intelligence is going to transform the way we think we way work the future of work is going to be completely different let me give you a small idea about how it changes today yeah ai can take the role of a poet that means it can take the role of a musician it can take the role of a artist what did we all with always think about these skills of a poet or a musician or an artist we thought that these are the skills cannot be acquired it has to come through your blood genes through your forefathers friends let me tell you my own experience one day after joining aict i asked a question to myself so what is this aict does because i moved from iit system and i am from institute of science we were actually like a frog in a well that was the best world for us but when i moved in i asked actually that time, that is the time chat gpt was actually released how many of you use chat gpt here raise your hands a good good number so you go back and ask chat gpt to write a poem about all india council for technical education believe me in two and a half seconds a beautiful poem will come out encompassing all the activities of aict and then i was not satisfied i asked the chat gpt a machine to write that same poem in hindi and today morning while coming in the car i showed to one of your professor from biotechnology same poem in tamil in less than 2 seconds a tamil poem explaining about all india council for technical education activities in three stanzas came out very beautifully even if i hired a poet he would have taken 6 and 1/2 months ladies and gentlemen <laughs> okay uh, even if i hired a poet to write a poem about aict he would have he has to understand what it does so that's the challenge we have today with the technology disruptions then i was i took a delegation to taiwan of uh, senior vice chancellors and the students had they put a project show for us one project caught my attention a student had done a robot playing a keyboard a robot was playing which is a very normal thing today many of our students also does but what he has done exceptionally well was he has composed the music using ai and this machine that means take the role of a musician this machine which in 3 4 seconds can create a music of its own believe me if if you ask again that question little bit after questioning it will come different poem different music that means no plagiarism software also can predict this so that means it's not copying that's the beauty of this technology and then all of you know soro how many of you used i don't know the soro which you know art pictures you can draw okay you can create your own video using a text today what is the most popular language for computer science people anybody it is not python it is english <laughs> and tomorrow it may be tamil you see you can simply ask a question you know you need to learn how to create a question friends watch this is the power of artificial intelligence which has taken a position of a poet a musician and an artist that means it can take away many jobs are you scared no you should not be scared why because this is a doc- this is a technology developed by human beings for the benefit of the mankind for the solution of the problems of the society at a speed look at the speed at which it does us that's very important 
See, a poet would have taken 6 and a half months, this does it in 10 seconds. A musician will slog for years and years to really compose a music. It doesn't happen overnight. Only some film music can be composed overnight. Okay, in, in, in a stretch of 10 hours, they will compose 3, 4 uh, beautiful songs, which is going to be a hit. But generally, you need to slog. Such things have become very simpler today because of the technology. This technology is a disruptive technology. What we saw in 80s, a computers coming in. In 2000, it is the internet and also uh, the Y2K problem. But ladies and gentlemen, believe me, this is really a mind boggling. So what we need to be ready for, our young people has to be, whether he is a civil engineer, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, any core engineering, he has to have a knowledge about the emerging technologies, data science, blockchain, cyber security. These are the areas all of you have to familiarize and get skilled. Friends, I talked about research and innovation where IITs have excelled themselves of the Institutes of Indian Technology. And another story is we need to skill this large population with 500 million young people into a skilled labor force for the whole world. See, skilling, it need not be just carpentry or, uh, you know, the earlier uh, fitter. Uh, they are not the skilling alone today. The skilling is expansion is mind-boggling. The skilling is now expanded to even emerging areas. So, believe me, in five to six years, nobody will ask you what degree you have got. Already it is changing, the landscape is changing, whether you have a commerce graduate or an engineering graduate or a doctor, doesn't care. What they will ask you, what is the skill you are going to bring to the table to my company? They don't want to train you after you join their company. They want you to get trained while you are in the college. Skilling has become an important aspect of our, uh, the curriculum. So AICTE has brought a lot of these changes in their curriculum. Swayam is a platform which AICT has done, which has 10,000 courses today. Largest platform, MOOCs platform in the world. Some of the courses are better than MIT MOOCs platform, let me tell you. So this is the kind of changes which we are witnessing where self-learning, continuous learning, skilling, reskilling, upskilling are going to be order of the day. All of us have to adopt. This is one thing we have to be learning as engineers of tomorrow. We need to adopt for these changes. If you don't adopt and you don't upskill yourself, reskill yourself, you become irrelevant. It is nothing to do with only students. It is even for us and all of them administrators who are sitting on the dais also have to change. Otherwise, nobody will come for these institutions. So this adoption of choice-based curriculum, I'm very congratulate uh, the Vellore University for bringing that flexibility into education. That is the strength of national education policy, ladies and gentlemen. NEP has brought that change in the perception of what how students can learn, what he wants to learn, and how he wants to learn. So the youth of our country has a lot of potential, friends, to make India a global power in all fields and sectors. It could be aerospace, it could be uh, medicine, it could be healthcare. You know, Ayushman Bharata is one, again one of the largest public digital infrastructure, huge public digital infrastructure. So we as a country were able to create, you know, DG, DG Yatra, where face as an ID, we can walk into the airports, very close to the aer aeroplane. No other country has that courage. Please let, they will make you to strip you everywhere and take you through the airports. So, friends, the only thing we need to do is to urge to do something. Urge, urge should be there from the belly. I always convey young graduates that never stop the passion of learning. This continuous learning is going to be the need of the hour today, need of the... So your education doesn't end at the college. And your skilling doesn't start after college days. It will start much before. So never miss a chance to upskill and reskill yourself. There are a lot of opportunities for you. Our NEET program, National Education Alliance for Technology at AICT, 
thousands of edutech companies are offering this program we have lot of scholarship for that we give fellowships you to study and pick up those courses free so use select and getting skill diverse so with this introduction of disruptive innovations ai tools such as chat gpt which can actually replace human beings in many jobs becomes important for future generation to be upgraded and equipped with the emerging and advanced technology continuous learning is critical therefore it is important that education should not only provide students with the skills they need to succeed in life but also inspire them to strive for greatness and to make a positive difference to the world that's where universal human values is a very very important concept to be taught to our engineering graduates ai ct has introduced universal human value courses in their curriculum and even students can get a minor degree in uhv today at in an engineering college which was never even thought about it before lot of transformative changes we brought in at aacte watch out these changes are going to make you highly skilled highly successful engineers of the world and there is no doubt about it there is nobody can replace no cunt no other country can replace us but only one thing you know let me give you a piece of advice do not limit yourself to just gaining book knowledge explore yourself that's very important that's what we teach in universal human value course try to indulge in the kind of activities what you have awarded today sports physical and mental activities as well otherwise you might have seen you know many students are committing suicide from quota and other sort this is a very serious issue for a nation like ours we should never get into such activities the so curriculum must be designed for the holistic development of the student where students going to enjoy learning that's that's going to be the order of the day if you don't change these curriculum to uh, such a level where students are going to be part and parcel of the enjoyment it's all about students the university's education system is all about students more creativity a student will have the more innovation will take place in the country leading to new startups and new entrepreneurial journey and our students will be the job givers job creators not job seekers see in our time during my engineering days we never even heard a concept called placement no placement we are only we all joined civil engineering because pwd was there and electricity board was there okay and today friends you have lot of opportunities and opportunity sky is the limit so i wish you the very best and i congratulate you all of you to receiving many awards today and research and innovation should be part of your so be bold to ask questions and do not try to get into a job immediately try to work developing a new idea of yours to bring a change to the world friends university day you are all celebrating today and day of reflection introspection and rec- and recommitment to the values and ideals of this institution you will always remember this institution the hostel where you stayed in and the time you spent here and the teachers you taught you and finally the institution you know as a memory best wishes to all of you and happy you know time in the future good luck namaskar jai hind thank you sir i now request chancellor sir to honor our chief guest for today we now move on to honoring saint person awardees i now request chancellor sir to honor the saint person awardees faculty and staff dr sinivasan r professor pg2 and director international relations
Dr. Srinivasan R, Professor and Director, International Relations. Dr. Sudhakar MS, Associate Professor, Level A1. Mr. Ashok Kumar B, Junior Accountant. Mr. Megan Atan G, Attender, Senior Grade. Mr. Murugan M, Security Guard, Senior Grade. Mr. Punya Kodi M, Liaison Officer. Thank you, sir. We now move on to Sports Awards. I now request Dr. N. V. Tyagachandan, sir, Director of Physical Education, to announce the Sports Awardees. On behalf of the Department of Physical Education, I would like to express my gratitude to the management for generously promoting sports and games to keep the students physically fit. We would like to congratulate the Sports Awardees for their achievement. Mr. Jayamardi M. Ms. Nitika. Mr. Aravindan, Mr. Madhava Krishnan, Mr. Baskar, Ms. Tarushya, Mr. Danasegaran, Mr. Vijwal, Mr. Adar Singh Saukan. Mr. Seaman, Mr. Rangit Kumar, Mr. Ashish Kumar S, Mr. Gaurav, Ms. Ramila, Mr. Telekram, Ms. Druti Anand, Mr. Jayesh, Mr. Dandraj, Ms. Varshini S. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Up next, we would like to acknowledge the efforts of our budding youth wing, the Student Council of VIT, for the perpetual toil and perseverance they put in for making every event and occasion a grand success. I'd request Chancellor Sir to felicitate them. Starting off with executive members, first we have Amir Abbas M. Medha Ramaswamy. Bhavna Jain. Shalu Pargavi B. Srinivas R, Aisha Hamid, L. Srimati, Siddharth Balakrishnan. Moving next to the member secretaries of the Student Council of VIT, we have Chaman Tehsin K.N. Gauri Mathur, Shrujana K, Shailja Dhanuka, Chakravarti S, Sahana G, Shreya Gupta, Kartik Kumar Gounder, Rohan Srivastav, Shubham Rao, Kostub Mathur, Pavitra Dhangaraj, Srijan Chaturvedi, Aditi Anand, Raghav Sampat, Karupasami S. 
Aldrin Albert, Abdili Zaveri, Madhunika R, Mahil NB, Varshini S, Priya Parthasarthi Avadhani, Bogolu Manipritam Reddy, Nigarke Jyotiraditya Shivraj, Khushi Parashar, Ishan Jain, Ryan Ebenezer Rajasekar, and lastly, Vineet Viraj. Thank you, sir, for doing the honors. Now is the time for endowment awards. Starting with Ms. Usha Mukundarao's Merit Scholarship for German language students, Karin Shima Bulla. I request Professor T.G. Sitharam to honor the students. Next, Siddharth Merit Kam Means Scholarship, Mr. Jaydeep Mukherjee. Next is Vijay Mukambika Endowment Certificate, Ms. Abhinaya K. Mr. Mohamed Jakir N. Next is Ishan Goel Endowment Certificate and Gold Medal, Ms. Elena Parajuli. Next up, BK Vora Memorial Award, Lola Daktu Abhishek Tvarma. Next up, Dr. Ramya Sekar Memorial Award and Gold Medal. Ms. Ananya. Next up, KGK Chaudhary Gold Medal for Best Sports Person, Ms. Nitya Shri Yu. Thank you, sir. I now invite our esteemed Chancellor, sir, to announce the Srimati Rajeshwari Vishwanathan Scholarships. Srimati Rajeshwari Vishwanathan Award is, um, we have uh, received so far 355 applications and 183 of them are being awarded with Srimati Rajeshwari Vishwanathan Memorial Scholarship. Thank you.
Next, we have for the best club and chapter from the allied category, we have entrepreneurship cell. Uh, this award will be given by Chancellor, sir. And the next one is from dance club. Next, we have music club. The next allied category will be photography club. So the next best club and chapter under arts and culture, quiz club. Under Outreach, Nature Lovers Club. Technical Club, Robovitics. Literary Club, Bengali Literary Association. Health and wellness, we have smile over stress. Best chapter, Biotechnological Research Society of India. Mrs. Binda Chaudhary Gold Medal for English Language and Literature, Akshat. B.K. Vora Memorial Award. B.K. Vora Memorial Award, Mr. Lola Dattu Abhishek Tavarma. Thank you to all the dignitaries. Now we move on to the Chancellor's Special Awards. Um, first, best performing student, foreign. I request Chancellor Sir to announce the name. Uh, best performing student, foreign student, Vikarpa Kautam. Best performing student NRA. Best performing student in the NRA category, Bhavana Jain. Thank you, sir. We now move on to the Best Outgoing Student Awards. Best Outgoing Student to your PG. The PG program, Chancellor Special Award to Sandhya.
Chancellor's Special Award, Integrated PG. Yeah, Chancellor's Special Award for Integrated PG Program, Sabrina Manikam. Chancellor Special Award, UG. Uh, three year UG program, Chancellor Special Award goes to Sinivas. We now move on to Chancellor Special Award, non engineering category. Non engineering. Chancellor Special Award goes to Sweta. Now we move on to the Chancellor's Gold Medal for Engineering. Best outgoing student in the engineering category. Mehta Ramasan. A big round of applause for all the awardees. Thank you so much to all the dignitaries. Now we move on to the vote of thanks. I call upon Shrijana K, Member Secretary, Student Council. On this wonderful occasion of University and Annual Sports Day 2024, I am honored to deliver this vote of thanks on behalf of the entire student community. First and foremost, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our Chancellor Sir for gracing this occasion with his presence and for his inspiring address. We are fortunate to have such a visionary leader who constantly strives to make our university one of the best in the world. Next, I express my earnest gratitude to our chief guest for sharing their insightful opinions and life experiences with us. His words have taught us a lot and will surely motivate us to reach our objectives. Heartfelt thanks to our vice presidents, assistant vice president, vice chancellor, pro-vice chancellor, registrar, 
deans, directors, esteemed faculty members, staff members, parents, my fellow students, and VIT family members. Additionally, I would like to express our deepest appreciation to our distinguished faculty members for their unwavering dedication in imparting knowledge and shaping us into the responsible citizens of tomorrow. Without their guidance, we would not be the individuals that we are today. I would like to convey our heartfelt appreciation to the Office of Students Welfare for putting together such an incredible program. Their meticulous planning and hard work have made this day a beautiful one for all of us. A sincere thanks to the COE team, the CTS team, the Students Records section, the Event Management team, the PRO office, and the press and media. I would also like to acknowledge the contributions of the support staff, security personnel, and volunteers who have worked behind the scenes to ensure the smooth running of this event. Last but not the least, I would like to express my gratitude to my fellow students without whom this event would not have been possible. Your enthusiasm and participation have made this day a resounding success. Lastly, let us take the lessons learned today and apply them to make a positive impact on the world at large. Thank you once again for this incredible celebration of our university. And let us continue to strive for excellence in all our endeavors. Thank you. I would now like to request that we all rise for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidada Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttala Banga Vindhya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Jaladita Ranga Tava Shubha Nami Jahe Tava Shubha Ashish Mahe Gahe Tava Jaya Gata Janagana Mangala Dayak Jaya Hai Bharat Bhagya Vidata Jaya Hai Jaya Hai Jaya Hai Jaya 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 Hai Request all to remain seated and wait for the dignitaries to leave the dais.